Afternoon everyone. Today I'm on Lutchwinna, Tasmanian Aboriginal land, sea and waterways. And I want to acknowledge with deep respect the traditional custodians of this land, the Palawa people. I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and to the Aboriginal community that continues to care for country. I stand for a future that profoundly respects and acknowledges Aboriginal perspectives, culture, language and history and a continued effort to fight for Aboriginal justice and rights paving the way for a strong future. Um, and probably this time, like many times, um, I think it's good to reflect on that here and around the world. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Darlene McLennan and I'm the manager of the Australian Disability Clearinghouse and Education and Training, ADSET for short. Today, we're excited to welcome Troy Weller. Um, as always, this is probably the fourth presentation that Troy has done for us. Um, every time I'm blown away, or each time I'm blown away with how much technology has moved um, and um, is able to uh, provide, uh, yeah, support um, for people with disability. Um, Yes, last week Troy presented to us on immersive readers and if you didn't um, were unable to attend that presentation, I really encourage you to go back to ADSET um, under the webinars and check that out because as I said, I kept going wow, wow, wow the whole way through the presentation. Um, it was pretty amazing what that technology can now do. Um, today, Troy is going to be delivering um, a session on us, which is going to be for us, which is focusing on writing support in Microsoft Toys. A uh, Troy Toys. <laughs> tools. Troy is the learning development specialist for Microsoft and has um, many years experience in this area. Before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, to activate the closed captions, you can click on the CC button in the toolbar, which is located either at the top or the bottom of your screen. Uh, we also have the closed captions available for you in a browser, if that's your preferred method. And Jane has just put that into the chat box now for you to access. If you have any technical difficulties throughout the um, presentation, you can email us at admin at adset.edu.au. Troy is going to talk to us for around 50 minutes or so, and then we'll have some questions. Throughout the presentation, if you have any pre um, questions for Troy, please put that into the Q&A box and we will, I'll be able to ask those at the end of his presentation. And in that, you can also rate your favourite questions. So if you can actually look for the thumbs up button and click on that. And that means that the questions get pushed up to the top. So that helps us manage the questions. We also encourage people to chat throughout the presentation and you can use the chat box for that. Just make sure that you choose all panellists and attendees so that people um, uh, yeah, can actually join in the conversation. And it's been great. We've seen you know people say hi from New Zealand, hi from... The Mallee or high from wherever else and that's great. And finally, um, we will be, we do send a survey out at the end of our presentations, so that will come into your inbox as soon as this webinar finishes. We really encourage you to fill that in, especially if you've got any ideas of future webinars. We're always looking for great presenters, great content, so please um, yeah, get in touch and let us know um, if you've got any suggestions. Okay, that's it Troy, that's enough from me, so thank you once again for joining us today and over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to check that you guys can hear me and I'm not on... Yep, you're all good to go. Button. Yep, the, the, the curse of, um, of, of online webinars is that mute button. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look obviously at, at writing support, um, but I just want to give you a bit of a, um, a direction on where we're going to go. We're going to look at the Microsoft Educator community very, very quickly again. I'm um, going to talk to you a little bit about the inclusive classroom and then we're going to jump in. What, I, what I'm presenting to you today is not in any way an exhaustive list of all the things that you can do to support writing with the Microsoft tools, not, not even close. What it really is, is looking at, at things that are sort of new released um, and or more recent release. Um, and, and those are the tools that we're sort of going to focus on, all right? So hopefully that's going to be um, new tools for you or at least, you know, ideas that you hadn't come across before. Um, we're going to look at Dictate, okay, Dictate right across Office. We're going to look at Immersive Reader. We're going to talk about Editor, which is, um, you know, you may or may not know is basically Microsoft's new uh, Office 365 writing support tool. 
We'll look at word prediction in Windows 10. So sorry, Mac and Chromebook users, that one's going to be a little bit irrelevant to you, but the rest of it should be uh, pretty much on spot, uh, spot on. We're also going to look at writing with the Word desktop app as well, and some of the uh, immersive reader features that are in there. Spend a bit of time on next steps and then we'll go into Q&A. So I am going to um, preface this as I probably did last time and say um, I am working from home. I've got two kids upstairs. There's pies in the ovens. There's a dog behind me. Um, the neighbor's dog is barking. Hopefully Zoom is going to filter some of this um, noise out. Nevertheless, just, just putting that up front. The other thing I also wanted to um, mention was a few people last time or last week had said that my screen was a bit blurry for them to see. Apologies for that in advance. Um, there's not much I can do for that. It's all about the bandwidth. Um, as I said, I'm working from home. I usually have pretty good internet, but some days it, you know, there can be a bit of a, uh, a drag on, on the neighborhood networks, etc. So apologies for that up front. There's not much we can do about it. So remembering our mission statement for Microsoft is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Um, I, as I said last week, I really like the fact that the accessibility piece that we, that we talk about really does uh, focus on our mission statement, that is to empower every person, not just the mainstream and not just the margins, but doing our best to target everybody. Um, the education.microsoft.com website, or we call it the Microsoft Educator Center, is your um, online portal for professional development. If you're coming from a, a, a K to 12 background, um, this is largely recognized by your teacher registration boards, but even if you're not, that's fine. There's some really, really good stuff in there. Um, we do have uh, specific courses targeted to higher ed as well. And um, I'll steer you back to some of the courses that I, I think are relevant to what we're looking at today as we come to the end. But there are individual courses, so you can learn how to use Microsoft technology with your students or even yourself. Um, in effective, excuse me, effective and engaging ways. We have learning paths which group those courses together and you can you know, do it in a linear fashion or you can drop in and out of those courses, but they tend to build off one another. And it'll also keep a record of your achievements if you need to demonstrate your own professional learning to others. So the sign-in start page for um, Office 365, or we're calling it now Microsoft 365, is www.office.com. Sounds like the pies are ready. Uh, www.office.com is the start page. Um, remembering that when you sign in, you sign in using your uh, university or institution email address and your password. Um, assuming you've got an Office 365 uh, account, which most of you will, that'll get you in. But you can set up a, um, a what we call a consumer account, which is a free account as well. Um, and you get, you know, limited features, but you'll still be able to access some of that stuff. Now, I want to talk to you, and I did last time a little bit as well, about the, the difference between Office and Office 365 and the different versions of Office, because I want to make sure that you actually have the most up-to-date versions of this software and you will find that almost every institution in the country has actually um, purchased subscriptions definitely not every but almost every has purchased subscriptions not only to the to the cloud-based software but also for the also for the fully installed software as well so you've got office 2019 which is a static version of office it does not change Okay, so when you install Office 2016 or you install Office 2016, there are no feature updates to that. There's security updates and back patches and all that kind of thing, but it stays static, right? So good, good software, but I wanna to talk to you about getting the better software. So we've also got Office 365, which lives in the cloud, and that's where we're at, at office.com website. So we've got our cloud-based apps, whether you're on Chrome, Edge, Firefox, et cetera, you're gonna get a version. Um, and that definitely for most people is, um, is accessible too. But we have another version called Microsoft 365 Apps. Now Microsoft 365 Apps um, is the subscription version and it marries the best of Office 365 and Office 2019 together in that it is a subscription service that is constantly updated with features. So you don't have to wait three or four years to get the next version of Office to get these features. And for us working in the accessibility space, this is really important because there's advances being made every month and features are being rolled out into these tools all the time. 
So I just want to make sure that you understand that when I start demonstrating some of these things today, you may say, hey, I'm not seeing that in my version of Office. And that's because you need to make sure that you've got this version here installed on your machine. Now, the standard licensing agreement is that it's five free copies. So for example, at um, Melbourne Uni, five free copies for teachers, five free copies for staff, five free copies for everybody, right? So that means you can put it on your PC and your Mac, um, you know, right across multiple devices, not just the one. That doesn't count if you're installing it on your phone or your iPad, but that's, that's um, additional, but you've got five free copies of this software. So what I wanna do now is I just wanna quickly take you in and make sure that you understand where to access that and how to install it. So here I am at office.com, okay? I've signed in with my institution email address and password. And then over here, it's a little bit hard for you to see today because of the colors, I apologize for that. But over here we see install office, this little button here. So I come in on my PC or on my Mac, I come to this web page, I find the install office button, which lives up here. I click on that. And then I wanna install the Office 365 apps or the Microsoft 365 apps. Click on that, follow the instructions and it will install that onto your machine. It'll overwrite 2019, it will overwrite 2016. And um, as long as you stay connected to that institution, it will continue to update, okay? And that's definitely, as I said, true because of some of the features or important because of some of the features that we're going to be looking at today. So when Microsoft, when we talk about the inclusive classroom, last week we talked about reading support. We focused largely on immersive reader. Today we're gonna to look at writing support, but we do have tools for math support and also for speaking and listening as well. So let's jump in. Let's have a look at writing support. So I wanna to talk to you today about dictate, all right? So dictation or speech to text is nothing new, okay? But where it's new for us is the fact that it is now built into Office both in the installed versions and also through the cloud versions of the apps. So obviously dictation or speech to text is uh, allowing you to speak into your device and, and the written text you appear, you know, will appear as, as you start to speak that and will appear in the program you're using. So it's a quick and easy way to create drafts, outline notes, or just get, you know, your thoughts out into text. So I'm not gonna spend time, you know, telling you all the great things about, you know, how you could use Dictate, because as I said, it's nothing new. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take you through and show you where it lives and some of the combinations that you can use in your Microsoft experience. So Dictate is available in uh, Word Online, that is Word in the browser, and it's also available in Word in the Windows 10 app, all right? So it's in other tools as well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's definitely in um, the Windows 10 app and it's also available online. So that means if you've got a browser on your device, then you will be able to use Dictate, right? Well, if, assuming that your, your device, you know, has a microphone and those kinds of things as well. All right, so let me give you a bit of a demo of that. I'm gonna take you in here now. So um, I'm gonna show it to you in the online tool, but again, it is available for you in the uh, Windows 10 app as well. Um, but if I come in here and I was to click on Word, all right, which I've prepared one for you already, you can see that when I'm on the Home tab here, Dictate lives just over here, okay? Now, I've already clicked the button, so I've got it sitting down here for me, but um, as soon as you push on that button, then it's going to bring up your menus and other bits and pieces like that. So I'm gonna um, dictate a bit of a story in here. Um, you can see when I hover over the button, I do actually have my Dictate settings. Um, and I also have a bit of a help uh, button there as well. But let's click on that now. Last Christmas holidays, I played with my puppy Brandy, full stop. I sprayed water at her, full stop. I wrestled her and I played soccer with her, full stop. We sat down together, comma. We said jokes to each other, comma. We played and played until I had to go into the house and eat lunch, full stop. I said to her, comma, open quotes, you are amazing, exclamation mark, close quotes. There we go. So you saw it had a little bit of um, time to actually catch up, okay? And you also saw that I had to punctuate. Now that's because if I come down here to settings, you can see, you can set it to auto punctuation or you can punctuate yourself. Okay, I've also got the ability to set the different languages. Okay, so it's not just in English. 
Um, but it also recognizes different accents in English, right? So you can see they've got UK, US, etc. And Australian is actually one of the preview languages. I actually have quite a good time with it. Um, I think it's actually uh, quite good, but that's where it lives anyway, okay? So once we come into the online version, as I said, we click the dictate button and then we can um, play around in there. All right, so that's really simple, okay? That's, that's basically the way that it works. Now, as I said to you before, the, um, the ability to punctuate or not punctuate really depends on, um, you know, is, is punctuation part of, the, part of the lesson? So for example, if you were working with um, maybe first year students, um, and I know that when my wife was doing first year, she actually joined um, a program to help her write her assignments and those kinds of things, this would be perfect for that kind of thing. But for those of us that maybe have already mastered punctuation, we don't necessarily need that. We just turn it on and let it punctuate for us. Really depends on how you wanna use it. And the cool thing is you've got that choice. All right, now when we do punctuate, we can say these phrases, right? So you can see here, full stop, comma, question mark. You can say period instead of full stop. That sort of lends itself to the American as well as to the UK sort of terms. Um, but there's a, there's a lot in there for you to use and I'll make these slides available to you. Um, but you can also do a quick search online in your favorite search engine for, you know, uh, Microsoft Office dictate uh, punctuation, etc. And you'll find a list, no problem at all. Okay, now the other thing too is I want to, um, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, demonstrate to you in this because it's all pretty similar, um, except for a, a, maybe when we get into Outlook a little bit, but it's definitely available in OneNote. It's available in OneNote online and it's av available in OneNote installed on your machine. Okay, it's available, as I said, in Word installed on your machine and also Word online. Um, it's also available in PowerPoint online and installed. But when we get to um, Outlook, it's only available in the um, installed version, okay? So in the Windows 10 version. Um, but the rest of them, they have in the online version as well as the installed version. Okay, so that's, that's Dictate. And it works pretty much similar right across those different tools. Now, we talked about Immersive Reader last week, and I'm just gonna really quickly remind you that in our last webinar, we saw Immersive Reader as a free tool that aids with independent reading and comprehension. And it lives in so many different apps and platforms, and it's helping readers with many different aspects of their learning. So there are features with this tool that read text out loud, break it into syllables, provide options for visual layout, such as spacing between the lines and letters or color themes. Writing can also take place when using Immersive Reader. So it allows students to consume their text with their visual preferences, as well as hear their writing read out loud. So it's really key. It's about hearing your own writing. There are people who have no problem writing and getting their, um, getting their thoughts down on paper, but then when they try to go back and, and actually access their own writing, they, they can have a bit of trouble there. So Immersive Reader can help us in the writing process there. So students who can't see their errors for a multitude of reasons, they can hear them and they can create revisions and edits with their own voice and then hear it read back to them through the entire process, right? That's when we start to look at it combined with, um, with Dictate. But let's go in here. I wanna show you, oh, excuse me. I wanna show you, here's where a student has actually typed their, um, their, their sentences onto the page. Um, and then what happens is when they go into Immersive Reader, so Immersive Reader lives in view, um, you can see there that the student's looking at that and already Word is giving them some support and saying that there's grammar issues and there's well as well as spelling issues, right? But still students may not be able to access that visually for whatever reason. So by being able to turn on Immersive Reader, the student can now have a listen to their errors. Can you listen with me? Last week, my and me dad went to see a guy about fixing our, get he was really expensive, about $300, so dad decided to treat. Another guy then, we went to see him, and he was Chepper. All right, so you can hear the spelling, um, you know, it, it's reading it phonetically, so you can hear the spelling errors. However, at the same time, you can also hear the lack of punctuation, okay? So that was just a continuous sentence, so the student can actually hear that and hear that it's not natural. And of course, you can slow that down and speed that up and all the other cool things about Immersive Reader, all right? So um, feel free to go back and look at our other uh, workshop. Uh, webinar around using Immersive Reader, but that's really how it can be used as a, um, as a writing support tool. Now, the other thing is when we combine Immersive Reader to, um, with, with Dictate, 
it means the student can now write with a degree of independence that maybe wasn't seen before. Okay, so instead of having an aid to support with the getting the text down on the page, um, now instead the student can do that themselves. And instead of needing the aid to access the text and have it read back to them, the student can actually get that support as well. So they can dictate in their own voice and then use immersive reader to assist them in the editing and revising process. So I wanna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna just close that window there and it come into here. So now um, I'm gonna push the dictate button over here Last week, me and my dad went to see a guy about fixing our fence. He was really expensive, about $300. So dad decided to try another guy. Then we went to see him and he was cheaper. All right, so again, same sort of errors, but this time the student's not having those spelling errors because Dictate's doing a really good job there. And then all this student has to do to, to listen, of course, is to hit the view tab and hit immersive reader and go in and access that. Now, the other thing I wanna share with you, we're gonna give this a bit of a go, is that I wanna see what happens when I put in the auto punctuation, right? So again, the student can actually get that little bit extra support. So let's try it again. Last week, me and me dad went to see a guy about fixing our fence. He was really expensive, about $300. So dad decided to try another guy. Then we went to see him and he was cheaper. All right, so there we go. Okay, so you can see there, it's actually listening for my pauses and it's uh, throwing in uh, punctuation, full stops, it's capitalizing the beginning, the start, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so you can see that turning dictate on, and to, so excuse me, turning, um, what's, the, what's the name of the feature? <laughs> turning uh, punctuation on and off, both have their times and both have their, their place and their context, which is why we've made that possible for you. All right, so now what happens is when I come back and use Immersive Reader, I'm gonna be able to see and hear my errors in, in, in a far, far better way and a far easier way. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is Dictate in Outlook. Now, remembering this is on the Windows 10 app for Outlook. Um, and I want you to think of the scenario of teachers sending emails to students, right? Lecturers, tutors, whatever, sending um, emails to students. Now, what happens a lot is a lot of information is sent to students through something like um, email. And if the student is locked out of that mode of communication, then that means obviously the student is not going to be aware. Now, Right now, you may be looking at my screen and it's quite small and it's hard to see. Maybe that was, is the challenge, right? Or maybe it's uh, dyslexia and the ability, inability to decode quickly enough. Whatever the challenge is, now we actually have the ability to um, click on read aloud inside the uh, email app, right? So we're not having to cut and paste it anywhere else. We're not having to use third party apps over the top, but we can have our emails read to us. Dear students, Please make sure you get your assignments to me by 12 tomorrow afternoon. Thanks. Mr. Waller. All right, so a bit weird writing myself an email, but there you go. Now what happens next is when I click reply, um, and I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger for us so you guys can see that. Um, now what happens when I hit reply, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look for dictate. There it is there, okay? And I'm going to dictate back to my teacher. Hello, Mrs. Smith, new line. Thanks very much for that email. I'll make sure I get my assignment to you. Warm regards, Troy. Okay. Um, and I could have punctuated there, of course, and I can turn that, that punctuation on and off. But there we go, that email's ready to go, click send. So it's really important to think about that, that you know, we, a lot of us take email for granted, that it's just that you know, we send emails, we think that everyone's gonna get the email. But sometimes there's that barrier there and being able to have these native to Office is really cool. Another thing I wanna stress is remembering this is native to Office, which has got a 90 something percent saturation in, in the business world, let alone at university, let alone in your own life. So the cool fact about this being, being native is, um, you know, it's gonna make people's lives a lot easier. Okay, 
Now let's talk a little bit about supporting students when we write. Now remembering I work right across, you know, kindergarten right through to higher ed. Um, but a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these factors in supporting writing are true, whether we're talking about, you know, little children or whether we're talking about university students or even people in, in the business environment. First of all, fixing everything is not productive, okay? There are things that just don't need to be fixed when we're writing. The communication is there, it's very, very clear. So we wanna make sure that we encourage students to focus on only what's important and what's necessary, okay? And that's gonna depend on the context. You know, it's gonna be a much higher standard writing a, a, an assignment or a report than it is just writing an email. Um, tackling everything at once can also be overwhelming, all right? So again, we don't wanna fix everything. But we do want to assist students to self-assess their writing and so that they can decide what's important and they can clearly see what it is that they need to work on. So let's talk about spell check. All right, now spell check is, you know, it, it's ubiquitous. We use it all the time. Um, and what the way it works or the way it used to work in older versions of Office, and this may in fact be the, the version that you're using now, um, is that when we right click inside the text, we get a drop down of words like that. And for some people, that's largely meaningless, right? So what happens with spell check software is it typically shows a list of spelling suggestions when you right click or tap on a flagged word. Now there are several different reasons why people with something like dyslexia, for example, have difficulty selecting a correctly labeled, uh, sorry, excuse me, a correctly spelled word from, from that list that we see there. First, they're gonna have difficulty perceiving the difference between similarly spelled words and determining which of them are correct. So this can be due to things like visual attention challenges, uh, challenge remembering the spelling rules, absence of visual memory, tracing the correctly spelled word, etc. So it didn't help that Office and, and some other tools, um, their spelling menus have only shown the suggestions themselves without any context to help choose that right word. Secondly, having too many choices slows decision making and causes what we call decision fatigue. So this applies to everybody, but it's especially pertinent to students who have more difficulty with reading speed and accuracy and a slower processing time. And then thirdly, unique spelling error patterns can cause words to look very different from the intended word. So historically, Office Spell Check optimized to show a smaller number of highly likely suggestions for the most common error patterns. Therefore, it often didn't have suggestions for unusual error patterns, right? So it wasn't always really helpful. Let me jump in and give you a bit of a demo. I'm gonna take you into Word, okay? And this is Word fully installed. I'm using dark mode here. Um, I hope that that doesn't um, stop you from seeing it so well, but here I am inside Word. Okay, so this is installed on my Windows 10 machine. Now, you can see that what's happening already is this is actually, you know, got the, the red squiggly lines and the blue dotted lines and the double blue lines, etc. That is a code that we need to make sure that we understand. So if you're working with someone that um, is, is, you know, using Office, just make sure that they understand um, what, those, uh, what those lines and what those symbols mean, um, because it's not always, you know, it's not always a given that people do. Now, look what happens. Here I've got the word over here, principle, okay? Now, when I right click that word principle, I want you to notice it's very different. And again, I apologize if you can't see this clearly, um, but it's very different to what we used to have. Now what happens is we've got synonyms underneath the words, okay? So we can see uh, there I've got principle, main, leader, superintendent, principle, code, source, and rule, principled, honorable, righteous, upright, okay? So it's given me some context, but if I have trouble accessing that text, if I click the little arrow here, I get another drop down, and now what I've got is read aloud, okay? So from inside the text, it'll do this for me. Principal, similar to, main, leader, superintendent. All right, if that's the one I'm looking for, great. I can keep going though if it's not. Principal, similar to, code, source, rule. All right, so it's not only given me um, those words, it's actually given me context and synonyms, and it's also given me read aloud. Now we've chosen to show synonyms, oh, excuse me, come back here. We've chosen to show synonyms as opposed to definitions or usage samples because they're the most efficient at the level of reading. The fewest words are required to convey enough information to make a decision. And of course, less text will help students, for example, because visual crowding, that is more text, and impaired visual search, could be less 
of an issue. We've also improved the spelling suggestions themselves. We leverage an online spell check, so you need to be connected to the internet. And that engine provides a larger language model and a phonetic spelling component that gives us better suggestions, all right? So you may not have noticed this when you upgraded to um, your more modern versions of Word, but there's more under the hood is what I'm trying to say. So it does give you a better, um, a better experience. Now, the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is now what's been released, which is called Microsoft Editor. Now that is again, built into the Windows 10 app. Um, keep an eye out of, um, when it's released into things like Mac and other tools, and it's also in line, uh, online. We'll come back to that in a minute, the online version. But what happens is I'm over here on the home button. I will find it under review, but even on the home tab, you can see editor lives over here. Now, when I push on the editor button, Okay, it opens up a little dialogue box over here. It's telling me that there are 11 suggestions. Now I've got multiple languages on this machine. I've got English, US and English, Australia. Um, if you've just got Australia, you're not gonna see everything. It doesn't have to be as overwhelming as it appears to be. Now, as I said, we wanna make sure that we teach those kids those symbols. But what's happening now is this is actually pulling the, um, the suggestions outside of the text. So instead of being overwhelmed with drop boxes and things like this, uh, drop downs, excuse me, all over happening here, we're actually moved away from the text. So it's easy to use. So there is, let's go into spelling, for example, let's jump into one of our spelling words here. All right, there's that, it's found principle again. Now, the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is that it's actually bringing the entire sentence out, not just my individual word, all right? So what's happened here is it's actually drawn the entire sentence out and it's still highlighted. I've got the symbol letting me know that um, it's misspelled, but read aloud is right there as well. So when I click read aloud, I could throw it at my principal to scare her. All right, so I can hear my error. And then of course, I've still got my suggestions down the bottom with the, um, uh, excuse me, with the synonyms. I've got read aloud, so I can listen to those suggestions still. Principal, similar to, main, leader, superintendent. But what I've also got is spell out, right? And it's just a simple thing that's gonna make such a difference to so many, um, so many writers. Have a listen to this. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. All right, and we can slow that down, of course, as well. But it's giving me the synonyms, it's giving me um, the, the error in context, it's reading it to me, and it's even spelling that out to me. Now, let me talk to you about some of the other things that are in there, which is our refinements. Okay, so you can see that there's grammar as well. All right, so when I click on that, it's going to bring those out. Um, it's also going to, you know, read, have that read aloud and read the suggestions to me, etc. But down here in refinements, I'm going to jump into the Australian refinements. I'm going to highlight the US ones as well. But we come down here into refinements and you can see that it's actually looking at clarity, conciseness, formal language, inclusiveness, etc. All right. So you can see over here, for example, um, if I click on conciseness, it's going to read the error to me as well as giving me the suggestions. It'll read it aloud and it'll spell it out to me as well. Okay. So that's all living inside there um, as editor. Now, when I click on the settings button down here, you can see I can go in there very easily and choose what matters to me, okay? So again, I'm sorry, that's very small, um, but you can, I've got categories of grammar and then numerous subcategories underneath. Then I've got clarity, conciseness, formality, etc. So I can be turning those things on and off. And you can even see there, we've got inclusiveness, cultural bias, ethnic slurs, gender bias, etc. It will highlight that and make my writing more inclusive. All right, and I love that. I think that's really good. But let me talk you through this a little bit because it's important some of the structural things we've done as well. So it's a categorized overview of writing enhancement opportunity. Instead of going linear through the text, spelling, grammar, conciseness, et cetera, et cetera, we're actually doing it category by category. And the refinements, as I said, are gonna give optional advice on stylistic or situational matters. It's also going to count my errors for me. Okay, so it's showing me, so as a student can look at that and say, okay, you know, I did better this time or I did worse, etc. All right, so those counters and, and check marks are going to track progress. But it also draws your attention to those other elements of good writing. All right, so it gives you a dashboard for self-assessment. 
So this is all about the student self-assessing their own writing, not needing a, an aid or a student support officer to, to help them. Okay, but if you are working with students yourself who are, who are challenged by tech for some reason, you can actually use this dashboard to know what to work on. All right, so for example, if clarity keeps coming up or um, you know, inclusiveness keeps coming up or certain spelling patterns, etc., then you can actually look at that and use that to know what to work on. So you can use it in a formative sense um, when working with your students. So don't, don't let them just click and run through, make sure that you get a look at that as well. Now, the flexible workflow choices of this lets you spend more time purposefully um, scrubbing the document one category at a time, fixing things in a recommended sequence and focusing your attention on what, what really matters. All right, so that's editor. Now editor is inside Word, editor is inside Outlook, um, and editor is inside PowerPoint as well, installed on your Windows 10 device. But the next thing I wanna take you through, and here's where we can, if you're using a, um, uh, a Mac or a, another Windows, excuse me, another um, browser-based device like a Chromebook or something like that, editor still lives in the browser as well. So let me take you and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to close this one here. I'm going to come into that same article. Now I'm living in the cloud, right? So you can see here um, when I hover over this, that's me down on my Windows 10 machine is actually inside that document as well. But here I am inside the same document. I'm opening it in the online version as opposed to the desktop installed version, all right? So when I come in here, editor is living over here on the review tab. So I need to click on review and then click on editor. Now editor online actually works a little bit differently. So you can see here, it's giving me an editor score. So it calculates a score based on the number and type of suggestions to be reviewed and document length. So for the student, they're actually gonna get a score that they can actually aim for higher levels or they can also know hey you know I haven't done so well this time around all right so it's gamified in a sense now for spelling when I come over here and, and um, right click on a word let's come back down to principle here all right when I click on that word it's old style all right so it's not as rich as um, the earlier version all right, oh, sorry, the early version I showed you, it's not as rich as the, the full Windows 10 version. So you may want to, you know, in terms of the support you need, you, you have to be down in the full version, that's fine. Um, but if you don't need that support, then you can be up here. But just to point that out, that it's not quite the same. Um, you can see here that when I click on spelling, all right, it's gonna take me to all those words one at a time. Okay, and I can go through and the same with grammar, if I have grammar errors as well. The other thing is it's got those refinements again. So things like formal language, like it's letting me know that I'm um, missing out on, on areas there in formal language. And look at this inclusiveness here. I like this one. It's actually picked up, instead of saying policeman, you should say police officer, right? So it's really very good. It's got a basic um, similarity plagiarism checker. Um, so it'll check similarity for online sources. This is not as you know rich as something like Turnitin or one of these other tools, but it is there. You've got readability as well, and also distinct words. I want to read this out to you because readability, you can see there I've got a score of 78. So it says the readability score is based on the, um, I'm going to say flesh, uh, reading E score. A score higher than 60 indicates short words and sentences. Most people find it too easy, uh, excuse me, easy to read that kind of writing. Also distinct words, the number of distinct words that occur in the document, a higher number indicates a larger vocabulary. Excuse me. It will also share with me the amount of time it would take to read on average and the amount of time it would take to speak out loud. Okay, if it's got enhancements, it will make those for you and suggest those for you as well. So really quite feature rich, different to the downloaded installed version um, on my machine. Um, the cloud version has, has aspects of it that are, that are great. Um, the downloaded version has aspects that are, that are great as well. And you may wanna use both at once. You may wanna use one over the other. It's all up to you and that's the power of choice. Okay, so that's editor in the browser. All right, now Windows users, the next thing I wanna share with you is um, word prediction for Windows 10. Okay, now word prediction for Windows 10, what happens is when you go into your settings, all right, now settings is really quite easy to find. Um, you just click on your, uh, your Windows key or your start button down at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then you, you just, you'll see the settings button, you click on that. And as you start to type prediction, 
you'll see show text suggestions as I type on the hardware keyboard. That's actually what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna do that and I'm sorry, it's off screen. So I'm just going to open this on my machine. I'm gonna drag it up so you guys can see that. Again, I'm still in dark mode. So I just find it easier on my eyes. Now, when I scroll down here to hardware keyboard, okay? So what I did was I started typing in show um, or I started typing in um, word prediction or something like that because it's, it's, it'll intuitively find what you're looking for. And then I just click on show text suggestions as I type. All right, so I'm gonna turn that on. Now look here, I can also turn on autocorrect misspelled words as I type as well. Now I'm gonna open um, OneNote. Just give me a moment, I'm gonna open this up. Got to make sure I'm not showing you guys something you're not supposed to see. There you go. Very good. Um, now, what happens is when I start to type the principle, now you can see as I've started to type, it's actually given me a series of um, suggested words that I may actually be looking to type. All right. So no matter where I am on my Windows 10 machine, anywhere where I'm inputting text, it will actually start to make those suggestions to me, just like on your mobile phone, all right? So that's word prediction. Now, the cool thing about word prediction is it does work on the Australian language pack now, which means that you're not going to be, um, you know, have American spellings and things like that suggested to you. You're going to get Australian spellings, all right? So again, where did I do that? I uh, clicked on my settings, all right? And then inside settings, I started to type um, text prediction or show text suggestions, something like that. Um, I came down into hardware keyboard and I just switched it on. Now I'm going to switch that off because I don't need that as much as um, others may. And I actually, it starts to be a little bit annoying for me, um, but that's how you, you, you do that. Okay. Now I realize that probably somewhere um, Jane is thinking, Troy, you're talking too fast and I'm going to try and slow down. I'm just conscious of time. So looking at this, I want to show you um, immersive reader inside the Word for Windows 10 app. Now, the reason why is because last time I focused on um, Word Online because the online version and the installed version of Immersive Reader are actually quite different, all right? And one is really good for reading. So we looked at that last week, that was the online version. And one is really good for writing and that's the, um, the installed version. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if I come down here into, oops, excuse me, that's the wrong one. That's the online version. If I come down here into my document, all right, when I click on the view tab, there is actually an immersive reader button that lives over here. So when I click on that, you can see this is already looking very different to what we looked at last week. Now I can change the column width. Okay, I can make it very narrow, I can make it moderate, um, I can make it wide, etc. That all, can all be changed inside. Um, I can change the page color. I can also turn on line focus, one, three, and five lines. Okay, I can increase and decrease my text spacing, and I can syllabify. What's missing is parts of speech, um, translation, but read aloud is in there as well but this time with a different voice. The other thing that's missing is the picture dictionary, but have a listen to this. Yep. I'm gonna pause that and play again. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can't actually hear that myself. Um, nevertheless, it's read aloud and it's an Australian voice, but as I said, it's slightly different. From the other no, one. we can't hear it either, Troy. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I must have a bit of a glitch happening here. But you can speed it up and slow it down. You can change the voices and change the accents and those things as well. Now, why I think this is better for writing is one simple fact. I can actually, which I can't do in the other version, I can type inside the document. Now, when I am inside the other version of Immersive Reader, I have to come back outside of Immersive Reader, make my changes and then go back in. Whereas now I can actually type inside Immersive Reader. I can do the read aloud. I can have all the changes that I, that I want, etc. But when I turn Immersive Reader off, it takes it back to a standard version of that document. So in other words, this is going to make it much easier because I'm going to get that 
um, support while I am writing and I don't have to go backwards and forwards. Now you might say, hey, look, I like some of those other features for, you know, for reading support. You can have the document open in Immersive Reader online and you can have the document open for an Immersive Reader fully installed on your machine. You can have them both open at the same time. You can choose which one you want to use. But my experience is this is much more conducive to writing down here on this version than it is in the other version. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Again, the Windows 10 version of Immersive Reader, very different, but also much, much better for writing, which is why we didn't look at it so much last week. Okay, now I'm not gonna jump in and take you through Teams today, but I do wanna make sure that you understand as long as those tools exist in the online, the browser version, then they will exist in Teams. So that means that Dictate and Editor are going to be their inside word. Dictate is going to be their inside OneNote as well, okay? So you can be using those tools, inside those tools, inside Teams. All right, next steps. Um, again, we'll make these slides available to you but we have a great website. I was talking with someone in the US today. We really need to change this now to, from remote learning to just teaching and learning because a lot of these tools um, are not just about remote learning, but there's a really good landing page, probably the best we've ever had at Microsoft. And the website is aka.ms forward slash MEC accessibility. You can go in there and explore this. There's some really good stuff. It may be a little bit sort of K to 12 ish, but nevertheless, a lot of the references and things that you can use will be great for you even in a um, vocational or tertiary environment. Um, the other thing here is we've got um, the, the walkthrough, empower students with, in, with inclusive writing tools, aka.ms forward slash inclusive writing demo. Um, and that will actually take you through a lot of what I've shared with you today. It'll um, walk you through these things, you point and click and move through. Um, our Microsoft Learning Tools availability, what is available in what tool or what platform, this is a really good reference for you. So if you're on an iPad, for example, you can know, you know, does um, Dictate work? It doesn't seem to work um, there. Well, what about if I'm on a PC? Well, then Dictate is available in Word on a PC. It's available in PowerPoint, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really nice reference for you to go back and have a look. There's a one hour course that you can use um, also as a reference, empower every student with an inclusive classroom. That's on that education.microsoft.com website. Um, I'm not going to take you through these because we did last time, but there's a great list of links here for you to explore. The Disability Answers Desk, um, which is real people on the end of a call, um, our Microsoft Accessibility YouTube channel, for you to give your feedback to Microsoft Enable, we're on Twitter and a couple of eBooks as well. Okay, so lastly, if you wanna reach out to me, please do. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm also on Facebook. Um, just search for me, Troy Waller. You'll know it's me because of the little um, avatar that's here. It's me standing in front of a, a Microsoft logo. All right, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna throw over, throw back to Tasmania and see if we've got any calls. Cool. Brilliant, Thanks, thanks Troy. Um, that's great. And I didn't have to um, wind you up at all. You did perfect for timing. <laughs> Don't know how our captioner went, but <laughs> I'm sure she went really well. Um, so just, yeah, we've got quite a few questions and we may not get through them all. Um, and I hope you haven't answered. Somebody asked, can you um, demonstrate how you could dictate um, how Dictate and Immersive Reader can be used within an assignment where there is a series of short answer questions to be answered. So, you know, you've got the question, answer, question, answer. Can you use the Dictate and Immersive Yes, um, look, I, I, in terms of dictating onto, um, yeah, I mean, I, have, I haven't set up any sort of demo for that, I'm, I'm sorry, but yep. um, for example, in here, we could have, if, if there was, um, uh, a series of questions, Immersive Reader will, will, you know, Immersive Reader doesn't know the difference between a paragraph or a question, right, in that sense. So it will read that to you. Um, but then you would need to come back out into the original document and then you would need to answer it. However, if you were doing that inside the um, installed version, um, you could actually have, let's turn on Immersive Reader again. Um, not, not revealing view. Um, so if there were questions in there, I could actually be typing those questions and having them read aloud. Um, I could also um, be using dictate 
in there as well. Um, so my, my advice for what the, the person is asking for there is to be using the Windows 10 app of Word to be doing that. Okay, brilliant. Um, with the read aloud, can you actually use a voice command to, to get that to work or it needs to be a click? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Um, okay. What I would suggest that you do is um, if you want to post a question to um, the, uh, let, me, let me take you back and show you that link there. Um, you can post that question to, um, on Twitter at, at MSFT enable, um, and they will be able to answer that question for you. And also remember the disability answers desk, okay, which is that 9am to 9pm, um, uh, Monday to Friday, 10am till 6pm, Saturday and Sunday, it's a 1800 number. Um, and they will be able to answer any of your questions that you have about this. Um, and that's a free service. Brilliant. Um, you put up the screen before about um, what, you know, when you, what you can use in where, but there is a question which um, you probably just could quickly answer. Does Dictate work in Microsoft iPad apps? So um, that... as, far, as far as I know, it's not actually embedded in those tools. However, yep. I would imagine that the, um, the embedded iPad Dictate tools um, would, would work inside those apps. I'm not 100% sure, but that's something you could definitely check out. But again, remembering that um, uh, accessibility support, that um, disability answers desk, um, even though you're not on a Windows device, you're trying to use an office tool and they will be able to help you cross platform. That's great. Um, does the editor point out if you're using an active or passive voice? Um, let's go back to, oh, I think I've closed it down. Um, let's go back and have a look at some of those settings because there's quite a lot in there. Let me just turn this off. Turn immersive reader off. Let's turn editor back on. Um, so if we come down to refinements here, um, we go into the settings. Oh, excuse me. Come into one of these. And then we click on, so I've clicked on one of them, then I click on the settings. Um, down here in your, um, th these, these check boxes, you can tick them on and off. If you scroll through here, I would imagine there will be something definitely about, well, I shouldn't say definitely. I would imagine there would be something about passive and active voice. Oh, there it is there. Passive voice. You want to turn that on or off. Passive voice with an unknown actor. So yes, it does. Yep. Great. Excellent. Um, can, um, so you can see all applications that use MS Dictate on the so-called learning tools periodic table live update link. No, that doesn't matter. I thought I saw something about something different than that. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Other question. If you download MS365, can you keep current Office Suite on your computer? Um, or technical okay, so that's, that's more a technical question. Yeah, no, I'm thinking a lot of them yeah, are. No, no, but it, but it's, a, it's a good question. So what you can do is you can actually, if you, those sorts of questions are best answered. If I, um, I'm just going to take you into a browser here. Have a look at this. This is one of the best um, kept secrets at Microsoft. It's support.office.com. Okay, so support, we're going to spell it right. Support.office.com forward slash the tool that you're wanting to use. But if we don't know what tool we're wanting to use, we can just go into support.office.com and you can type your questions in here. Okay. And there'll be a bot that will answer those questions or you can search by tool. And if you scroll down right to the bottom, you can actually get support. Okay. So there's a contact us and you can actually um, start to, um, you know, have text uh, communication. There's also a community in there as well. So support.office.com. Okay. Um, another question is, can the grammar errors be fixed using dictation? Not that I know of, no. Okay. So um, somebody's asked around that the example that you um, did where you said me and um, me and my dad, it came up as ma maid and my dad. Yep. Um, and it didn't actually fix that. But I would say that would be when you put it on read aloud, you would actually pick up that mistake as a student, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's right. Yep. And remembering that the Aussie accent is still a preview language. So it's going it's yep. to get better as that gets released. Um, as I said, just recently, they re-released the Australian accent for um, Immersive Reader, which just sounds really, really good. Um, Dictate will come. We'll get there. Yeah, excellent. 
Um, sorry, I haven't read this one before this because it's quite a long one, but I'll read that and hopefully it'll make sense. Are settings such as keyboard or cursor and pointer saved for users or on the computer? This is for a student using an account on a class computer. Do they need to be on the same computer each time or will the settings travel with them between machines by virtue yeah, of their account? Money. When when you set up uh, a Windows device, um, you can actually um, get it to save your settings so that when you sign into the next Windows device, it will bring those settings across. Now, what that means in terms of individual profiles, like I know that a lot of um, institutions will actually allow you to come and sign into a device and it will bring your profile with you. That's something that you'll need to speak to the techies at your school and or at your institution and ask them about making sure that the settings are ported across as well, not just your files. Um, but um, the, the standard um, operating system of Windows 10 means that if I've got multiple machines, when I sign into one, when I sign into the next one, it will bring the settings across as long as I switch that on. Brilliant. Um, and just, there's a couple of questions from, from Mac users. Can you just confirm again what's what's available for Mac and what's like yep, what's um, not? I'm not a Mac user, so, yep. <laughs> and, and, but, but hey, Macs are great machines for sure. Um, I would bring you back to this one here, okay? So the Microsoft Learning Tools availability slide, and you can um, flow through and find what's available for Mac. But remembering when we see something like web, that means as long as you've got a browser, it doesn't matter what device you're on. Yep, excellent. All right, there's a few more questions there, but I think they're more of the, um, yeah, the fixing up of, you know, the back end um, questions. I'm sorry if I've missed any important ones. Sometimes they all jump over themselves when people are uh, um, pressing the up button, et cetera. So I may have missed something. We'll go through and if there is anything pertinent that um, Troy can, answer then we'll put that up on the website so thank you so much troy for your presentation today yeah. um yeah it's kind of i need to always leave probably an hour in my diary after this so i can go and play because it's quite frustrating that um yeah I'm, I'm unable to play play um yeah you find the time to play so i definitely want to make that um available now i'm sorry to say this is our last web um webinar we've got planned for a little while um we will have a few more um yeah, coming up. And so keep out on, on keep up on um, our website. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted. I've got people at the door. Sorry, the usual thing of working from home. It's quite distracting, isn't it? <laughs> I hope your pies haven't gone cold, Troy. Oh, no, I, I thought you heard the ding. They, they, yeah, no, we did hear the ding. So, yeah, they've, so. Eaten, they've been and gone. They'll be, be eaten already by the kids. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you so much, Troy, for, for presenting to us, giving your time so freely and to answering all the questions that people have. It's fantastic to, um, to see how far Microsoft has gone. One of the things we are working on um, is with Microsoft is to have someone present to us on Teams and the accessibility within Teams. We're still in negotiations with um, Microsoft and hopefully that one will get announced soon. So all the very best, Troy, and hopefully um, we'll see you before the year's out with another presentation. Sounds good. Thanks for okay, having me. Okay, thank you. Bye.